G'day everyone. Um, yeah, so I thought I'd do a quick little video um, four months on from receiving my Pick Pro scooter. Um, yeah, the response has actually been really good. Thank you to everyone who commented on my previous one. Um, yeah, people who had a few questions who have messaged me um, on Facebook or, or other means. So yeah, I, I thank everyone for those and um, I guess I consider myself somewhat of an expert on these now because there's not a lot of other media out there giving reviews and um, telling people about the process and that sort of stuff. But um, unfortunately, things have to start on a fairly sour note, and that is that um, someone did, a couple of people actually from Western Australia have messaged me um, asking various things about the scooters and whatnot, and um, unfortunately, I can't recommend Pick Pro anymore as a company based on some really, really poor customer service. Um, yeah, someone messaged me from, from Perth, they ordered their scooters on I think it was like mid November or something like that and they were told yes um, you know you'll get them in one to five business days um, mine did come then but being on the east coast of Australia I believe that had a big part to do with it um, however this bloke being in Western Australia had waited um, is still waiting now here we are it's the 19th of January as I'm filming this and still hasn't received it so two months is a very very long time very poor customer service um, this individual went and messaged Pick Pro, constantly wondering, where's my scooter, what's going on, I've paid this money, where is it? And still hasn't received it, so really disappointing. Um, and I actually messaged them as well, because I thought, you know, what's going on? I had such good interactions with Pick Pro, this scooter came super quick, there were really good things happening. And I thought, oh, well maybe because I've had positive interactions, I've given them some reviews and that sort of stuff, maybe they'll respond to me. They put me on scene as well. I haven't heard anything back from them, so, it's just incredibly disappointing um, that a company, you know, who, who doesn't do a lot of marketing and that sort of stuff would, would have such poor customer service. So, um, unfortunately, I can no longer recommend Pick Pro based on that. Um, I'll update a video if, if that changes, if, if this bloke ends up getting his, his scooter. Um, but, yeah, very disappointing. Apart from that, though, um, obviously having had four months now to ride this scooter and review it a little bit more, um, I've made a, a very small modification and I will just thought I'd um, yeah, put this video out so people can see what I've done to mine and answer just a few other common questions. Um, yeah, feel free to put any more in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them as well. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd give a quick update um, on that part. And so yeah, now we'll get into the scooter review. So the first most obvious modification and basically the only main one that I made to the scooter um, was popping one of these honeycomb tires. Now I'll zoom in a little bit so that you can see. So what you can see is they actually have holes all the way through. Um, now the reason for doing this was actually like on, I think it was the second time or even the third time that I rode the scooter. I think it was actually during the range test um, for the eco mode. I popped the back tire and that has been a fairly um, common I guess criticism or complaint that other users have had um, yeah it's just something that is I guess a design fault um, for a lot of other clones of the Xiaomi 365 which is obviously what this scooter is as well so um, the setup that I'm currently rolling with is the honeycomb tire now obviously the reason for this tire is that it does not have an inner tube so you can't puncture it so it's going to be puncture free you're not going to have to worry about changing tires all the time um, but i did have one heck of a time actually trying to get um, the original tire off and then to try and mount this i do not recommend <laughs> um, trying to mount them yourselves because Honestly, for me, it felt like it took like three hours to do, obviously having to undo all this and, and, and you know, do stuff with the brakes and the disc brake and, you know, just trying to take this off was a nightmare in the first place. And even worse was, yeah, um, trying to actually mount this completely solid rubber onto the rim. Um, so I, I do not recommend trying to do that. It'll take what feels like years off your life. I was sweating. It took like three people to get it on. So I don't recommend that. But what you can do is you can buy them already pre-mounted, which is definitely what I would do. It, do, it does cost more, obviously. Um, I can chuck a couple of links down in the description 
uh, if you're interested, just on like ones that I found on AliExpress or whatever. So I would definitely recommend doing that. So that would come completely as it is now on the wheel. Um, and it wouldn't mean that you, yeah, you wouldn't have to take this off and, um, or take the original wheel off and then try and mount this fully solid rubber one on yourself. Um, so that's the first thing that I'll say. Um, the other thing that I found as well is, can I get a good angle of it? Um, there's like a little nut in here um, and that has come loose a couple of times for me. So just make sure it, as you can see on this back one, I think that like there's a spot for it, but either mine has fallen out of there or it was never on there in the first place. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but I would say, yeah, definitely be aware of that. Make sure they're nice and tight because what this thing does, that's holding your brake mechanism in place. Um, otherwise, and you'll probably hear a little bit now, when I do spin this, I still do get a little bit of scraping. You can see on the disc how it's a little bit worn there. Um, and I say that that's probably as a result of the, the brake. Um, so when I spin it, you'll probably hear a little bit of scraping, like very slight. Not sure whether that's been picked up by the um, microphone on my phone, but that's all right. So anyway, that's my back wheel setup. And then the front wheel is just exactly as it was. Now, the reason for that being, let me just sit down. Um, the reason for, for this one staying in the front is because although the honeycomb tires at the back are puncture proof, puncture proof let me say that again, um, you're not going to have any issues with that. It does make it a much harsher ride. So to try and counteract that a little bit, um, yeah, sticking with the air filled tires on the front is definitely the way to go. Um, yeah, I couldn't imagine how much harsher it would be again if both the front and the back wheel were honeycomb. The other reason for that being that the motor is obviously stored in the front here. So you've just got a whole bunch of like electrical stuff that you have to bear in mind if you do try and swap your front tire to a honeycomb as well so that's my current setup it's literally just the yeah haven't touched anything at the front and at the back we've swapped to the honeycomb tire which you can find on aliexpress for about 40 australian dollars or thereabouts I'll, I'll pop some links down and you can do a little bit of research um yeah i'm not going to do a tutorial on how to change them over um, but there are plenty of those around already on YouTube if you wanted to find out. So that's basically all that I've done. A um, couple other bits of like review, so to speak, is down the bottom here, this is obviously um, your deck and, and the deck is quite heavy. So that's actually where the majority of the weight is in the scooter, which can be good, can be bad. Um, yeah, as I'm looking at it on top now, as you can see, it's actually quite thick. So like the clearance that you get from the bottom of, say, the wheel to the bottom of the deck is not as high as you think. So it means that when you're going over things like little ledges or whatnot, um, yeah, you've just got to be careful. I think if I have a quick look underneath, you can see mine has been kept in relatively good condition. I don't think I've banged it up too much. Um, but yeah, that would definitely be a consideration. Um, for yeah, you definitely don't go off tracks or I've stuck mainly to like bike paths and um, yeah, I've tried not to thrash it as much as possible because yeah, obviously the, the more you take care of it, um, the better it's going to last if I stand it up. Um, so yeah, as you can see here, not really much to write home about um, the bell still works fine the brakes still works fine and these grips are actually really they're really good i'm a big fan of these grips so apart from that um yeah that's basically all there is to it if you do have any more questions let me know um but i personally would definitely recommend going with the honeycomb tire at the back and the pneumatic or air filled um tire at the front that's that's been the setup that i've found has been the best i've had no issues obviously i haven't had to to change this one again um, anyone who's changed one of these back tires will tell you how long and how frustrating it can be. So, um, yeah, basically that's that's my review. Um, yeah, bit of a sad note having to no longer recommend Pick Pro, but if you've already got a Pick Pro scooter and you wanted to mix it up, or you found yourself with a flat tire and you're wondering what your options are, um, yeah, this this is definitely the setup that works for me. So. Anyway, guys, hope that helped a little bit. And as always, yeah, just chuck any questions or comments that you might have underneath and we'll go from there. Thanks very much.